I'm Ben Molis, and this is my friend Justin Silver. Justin is four years younger than me, but our families are intertwined in many different ways. My sister, Sarah, and Justin's sister, Haley, took swim lessons together when they were two years old. Our families go apple picking every fall into a water park every summer. Justin was born with the genetic condition Fragile X Syndrome. For those here today, you know the intricacies of Fragile X. Fragile X is on the spectrum of autism and exhibits various physical and mental symptoms. Justin is prone to seizures, three to four on average every month, with some so severe that he has to be taken to the hospital. Treating his condition, such as going to the doctor or traveling to a test center by airplane, only exacerbate Justin's anxiety, causing more seizures. One on one, Justin is calm. He asks me questions about my family, including Cody, and he likes when I show him things in my room. As the number of people in the room increases, so does Justin's anxiety. Despite Justin's limitations, he is an incredible boy. Sometimes I sit on the floor and marvel at Justin's ability to construct train tracks specifically designed to an image in his head. It illustrates Justin's own form of genius that I believe exists in him. When I was younger, I volunteered for a foundation Mr. and Mrs. Silver established, the Fly With Me Fund. At the first fundraising event, in 2007, the Fly With Me Fund raised over $70,000 and expanded its mission to help families afford the costs associated with getting tested and treated for Fragile X. As my understanding of Fragile X became more complex and my interest in using my creativity and engineering skills to solve problems grew, I wanted to find a way to combine the two. My interest in architecture, engineering, and design started in my 10th grade class with Paul Rothstein, Lindbergh High School's architecture and design teacher. Mr. Rothstein found ways to pique my interests and encourage me. When the school year began in September, I told Mr. Rothstein that I wanted to do an independent project to design a toy for Justin. He asked only one question, how can I help? We began by putting together a design team. I asked Haley, since she knew everything there was to know about Justin and could offer insight into his needs. I asked J.D. Jebia, a sophomore who lives across the street from the Silvers and is like a big brother to Justin. Finally, I asked Sarah, who was starting ninth grade and has a unique ability to offer practical insight where others cannot. The team met with Mr. Rothstein in October. We invited Mrs. Silver to show us the products currently in the market. Typically, the products take the form of checklists, whiteboards that list tasks that parents, teachers, or therapists can work with the child to accomplish. Mr. Rossian suggested that he create a challenge, a problem statement as we designers call it, for the students in his advanced design class, the final class in his three-year architecture and design courses that teach students about the ins and outs of engineering and a familiarity with computer programs used by architects, engineers, and designers. With me overseeing their work, the challenge to the advanced design class was straightforward. Come up with a product designed to assist fragile X children in structuring their days and ease their anxieties in moving from one activity to another. Mr. Rothstein told his class to view the team as a client seeking ideas for a design. The class, 11th and 12th graders, was divided into two groups, each charged with working together to create a design scheme. Group number two designed a box that unfolded into two sides. The concept was based on a track theme around which users would figuratively travel as they went through their day. We asked the team to render a drawing of what they called the schedule tracker, which was appealing for several reasons. First, it created a game-like entertainment for users. Like the game of life, pieces moved around a board. Second, the game could be customized to each child by changing what was written on the whiteboard. Finally, because the schedule tracker was different from what is in the market, it wouldn't be associated with school. The game we designed is called the Magic Arrows. One side of the game is a circle with eight peg holes around the circumference. The center of the circle houses overlays divided into eight pie segments. The basic overlay focuses on the typical school day. Get up and get dressed, eat breakfast, go to school, come home and do homework, afternoon activity, eat dinner, after dinner activity, and bathe and go to bed. In addition, eight differently colored pegs give the user the option to fill in each peg hole or to identify with a specific color that moves around the circle as each task is completed. The overlays are secured on the circle in the game and can be replaced with different overlays 
that focus on a specific segment of a day or a completely different task also divided into eight segments. For example, our prototype includes overlays for bathing and for going to the doctor. To assist users in transitioning from one activity to another without causing excessive anxiety, the second side of the game has two circles of equal size with arrows in the middle. The two circles are labeled activity and reward and are made of whiteboard. If a particular task involves a choice, say, what is your afternoon activity, the supervisor can write choices on the whiteboard and let the user spin the magic arrow to choose the activity, such as watching TV or playing with a toy, or the rewards such as eating pretzels or calling grandma and grandpa for finishing that task. Accordingly, the magic arrows target lower and higher functioning users. One side focuses on users with basic needs and goals, empowering users with a visual sense of achievement as they track their day or activity in a fun or game-like manner. The second side of the magic arrows helps a user make choices or transition from one task to another. Supervisors can limit or expand the number of choices on the whiteboard depending on how many choices the user can handle. Accordingly, side number two subtly enables users to make choices before their anxiety becomes an issue. In January, Mr. Rothstein surprised the team. James Fanning, the middle school technology teacher, agreed to assign the magic arrows to his eighth grade class. In addition, Limbrook High School's principal, Joseph Reynas, the superintendent of the Limbrook School District, Melissa Burak, and my guidance department advisor, Christina D'Angelo, would support the project. In effect, the Limbrook School District made the Magic Arrows a district-wide project. In February, we received additional good news. First, William Brogan, a patent attorney, agreed to handle our patent application pro bono. Second, Mark Saransky, who owns a printing company, agreed to handle all of our printing needs. Third, Elliot Polinsky, who owns a lumber supply store, agreed to donate all materials for the manufacturing process. Finally, the event planners at the Fragile X Conference in Anaheim agreed to give the team a booth free of charge to display the magic arrows. The team continued to refine the magic arrows. In April, Mr. Rodson and Mr. Fanning manufactured a prototype to make sure all design specifications were correct. Throughout May, the eighth graders manufactured the prototypes. Mr. Fanning was on hand to guide the students and impart to them the importance of what they were doing. By June, 15 prototypes were completed. My cousin Alex Levy, a professional graphic art designer, created a special logo using a rainbow, which Justin loves to draw and has become Justin's hallmark. Mr. Zaransky finished the overlays. Mr. Brogan continued to work on the patent application, which will be registered under the name of the Fly With Me Fund, with all proceeds going to the fund's mission to help those in need. I'm Ben Molas. I'm 17 years old and entering my senior year at Limburg High School in New York. I play varsity football in the fall and varsity lacrosse in the spring. I'm the vice president of Limburg's National Honor Society, a member of the superintendent's committee, and a national merit semifinalist. I realize how hard I've had to work to attain my ambitions, but I like my life. When I first told my dad what I wanted to do for Justin, he told me a story. A man of 80 dies and goes to heaven. When the man sees God, he confronts God and says, I lived 80 years. I rarely knew from want. I had a wife and children and grandchildren who were all healthy. Even still, I saw so much around me that caused me sadness. I saw wars that destroyed people's lives, the damages done by earthquakes and tsunamis, and children who went to bed hungry and suffered from disease. You are God. You can do anything. Why didn't you do something? God looked at the man, touched his hand to the man's cheek, and replied, I did do something. I created you. The Magic Arrows was an initiative that was personal to me. I've known Justin for 13 of my 17 years and wanted to give him something that I created. It had meaning to me because Justin is a part of who I am. My idea grew. It cannot have done so without the help of Mr. Rothstein, without Haley, JD, and Sarah. It led to the contributions from the advanced design class, from Mr. Fanning and the 8th graders, it continued to grow with the support of Superintendent Burek, Principal Rannis, and Miss D'Angelo. From friends like Mr. Brogan, Mr. Zaransky, and Mr. Polinsky, and the Fragile X Foundation for their generosity, an idea spurred action. People contributed their unique skills to the project. And like the old commercial where two friends tell two friends and so on and so on, the involvement of the Limber community grew. Yet as I look back on what the Limber community accomplished, I'm cognizant that ideas that benefit people are often inspired by a single person.
and that community service must start with one individual who evokes in others a desire to change the world. This person is my friend Justin Silver. Justin is the magic arrow in the Limber community. I tried to think of a way to conclude my presentation on a more personal level. I thought of a stone being dropped into a body of water. Once the stone makes contact with the water, ripples caused by the impact spread. Maybe this is like life. Justin was my stone. His being a part of my life spurred my actions. I was the stone to my school. My desire to combine my passion for Justin with my creativity launched this project. If there's anything to take from this, it is this. Be the stone. You may be one person, but you never know how far your ripples will spread.